You following me? This is Colt from Spit and Text Upholstery. This is uh, video number three? Four. Or is this four? Well, I'll be. It's number four. So we started off with tear down of a boat seat, and then we started tearing the hide apart, you know, the skin. And uh, we steamed our, out foam. We went through an extensive uh, uh, conversation on how to and how not to trace out a pattern, an old pattern. That's what this video is about, is take an existing pattern. You've never done a boat seat before in your life, and you have to use what you got. So this is how you do that. Again, okay, and a few little places here where we uh, added a little bit of fit, uh, fabric to get rid of a little dive in the piping, the, the perimeters. You remember all those things. So anyway, now we are at the, we're, we're going to cut it. So remember what I said, around the base of the seat cushion, it's, it's called a gusset. <clears throat> I like to cut, get the best one, iron it out, and then mirror image it. So, all right, that's our gusset. Okay, there's our, our two French seams. This is our anchor that uh, sews in between the main body and the and uh, the three panels, which consist of a French seam. And the gussets surround it. There's seven pieces to this particular boat seat. Oh, and I might add, always make sure you've got yourself a Bible. You can't lose. Moving on, but I mean it. So, boom, boom. We are traced, I traced this out earlier. So this one will be a mirror image. Now notice, this is a good side down. So when we cut this out, what we'll do is we'll put the bad side on top of the bad side. I call it the bad side, the unfinished side, okay? Uh, and therefore, then when you fold it out, they will be a mirror image and they will both be good side up. You follow? So we cut this out. And then we fold this on top of itself here. So therefore the good side, right, right, right. Okay, just checking. So uh, I showed you how to do weld cord piping and a French seam, two different sew allowances. Sew allowances are imperative. Now this will change when we go to put the scrim on. Please rotate the camera this way. See the pink? That is our scrim. Back to me. So now, once there is scram on the back of this and there's fabric on the back of this, this will change the way that the sewing machine behaves. So you will have to make a practice piece. So while you're gluing, I'll show you, we're going to go right into it. Um, when you glue your scram to your fabric, it's going to increase. Okay, so it's going to come up to a half of an inch when you sew good side to good side. Okay, plus this. So you have to get a practice piece. You'll have to do this piece all over again before you ever do this. Always get into that habit. Practice piece with the medium that you're using. You're using foam, well, glue some foam to some fabric, the same fabric that you're using, scraps, and uh, sew it and, and find your stitch count because it changes. Some machines are different than others. Some of them don't vary hardly at all. You set it and it is what it is. But when you have a lift foot like the Thor over here, please rotate the camera. The Thor 1541S. That will sew 22 millimeters of veg tan leather. It's a beast. But when it sews foam and fabric, it changes. It says it's one thing, but it really isn't. Machines are finicky. Always use a practice piece. So let's move on. Let's cut this out. Okay, we have a clean table underneath. Remember, we trued our course. These are WIS. These are the 7280 series. So this is what you want for vinyl. They're outstanding. They're very expensive, but uh, you only got to buy them once if you take care of them. Like butter. Okay. 
So when you're cutting your, your, your pieces out, always notice. You know, you know what's square. Your eye will tell you. If you're a little cali on this side, just make sure that you just take your time and make it square. It's hard to, you'll see it when you're doing it. Now remember, well, all of our witness marks are on our sew allowances around the perimeter, okay? Are, 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 uh, well, they're more like a hashtag because they're not witness marks. Uh, uh, they're just reminders. Witness marks come later. So this is the staple marks on the bottoms. Remember, we got wiggle room with that. But when you fetch seams come together like this, you want to make sure that everything is correct. The bottoms, you got wiggle room. Remember that? Doesn't matter. But when you're sewing these panels together, you just take your time and make sure they are true. True meaning straight line. Good little habits. There's rituals to upholstery. You have to make sure you cross your T's and you dot your I's. Take your time. You know what looks straight. You know what isn't straight. Be present. Always be present in upholstery. You see something that's a little wiggly on one end, you know what you're doing. You know what the panel is or whatever the piece is. Keep it straight. Sometimes you can split the difference. Keep it straight. And a lot of what we're fixing, or, you know, it per it, the perception is I'm fixing it, is remember when I told you earlier in the last video, <clears throat> once it's all put together and you go to upholster it and put it over the foam and, and set down your anchors, um, a lot of people don't want to reach underneath and pull that sole allowance out and lay it flat, so they cut it. And that's what a lot of this is. I'm just putting it back to norm. I believe that uh, soul allowance should be kept always. Uh, it shows professionalism for the next gentleman or gentlewoman that uh, wants to redo it in case uh, what you did is damaged. <sighs> and they would appreciate your professionalism because <sighs> they're just like, oh, I see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just got to put that little bit of work in. So these are our three panels. Three of seven. Now let's come over here. This is our gusset. Okay, and notice how I'm up bottom, top, number five, left and right. Okay, so this is the bottom. This is the one that staples. Always, always note those things because they're not complete, you know, it's not imperative. You just, you know, horseshoe, horseshoes and hand grenades, you're close. But the top, now I adjusted for a half inch that was missing. So as I cut, I can, I can see, I can see just how something might lay. There's a lot of intuition here. You're going to, you're going to try to keep things as fluid as possible. See what I mean? And it all comes with experience. And overall, you know you have your half inch, okay? But you see how see how see how smooth that is now? Okay, so your good side's down. Our first pattern. This is the left side of, of the seat. So what you do is you take it and then flip it over. So now we have bad side to bad side. 
Good side on the top, good side on the bottom. Then we trace this again. Mirror image. Remember? And then you're good to go. And you just kind of run your finger. You know, I'm using a pen right now. Works just fine. Doesn't bleed through. Remember I told you? Be mindful. of what kinds of pens you use when you're using white or almost anything really just be mindful always because it can bleed through vinyls just gently walk it down boom 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 now this this has to be traced exact Remember, I already, I already gave it a half inch on the other end. So this gives us a whole inch of wiggle room on the end where they meet. Okay, and with foam, remember I said foam? When you use foam, it changes. You might come up short sometimes. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, especially on, on gussets. Okay, so see that? Now I fold it over. Look at that. See the top? Perfect example. Mirror image. Okay, so we have three cut, gusset, four, other gusset, five, and on these, mirror image, you follow that line perfectly. Do not deviate. Nice. See how I'm using my scissors? Sometimes you can push. But when you're cutting a pattern out, just make sure that you take your time and you get it right. Follow that line. Don't worry about trying to go quick and push your scissor through your vinyl, which you can do. And keep, keep your cuts true. Okay? Never close your scissors all the way, except at the end. Now this is the bottom. The bottom isn't as crucial because it's going to staple underneath. So it doesn't matter. You're going to trim it up anyway. So if you're eighth inch over or whatever. So what? Okay. So we are, the original pattern ended about here. Okay, so we have one inch of wiggle room for our gusset. And, and if, if, if you need more than that, you did something wrong. Okay, <clears throat> so three, four, five. Always try to be orderly. In your endeavors, always clean, especially when you're using white or, you know, real, real light colors like this. Okay, so we have two. We have an anchor and then we have the main body. Notice how I marked left, top, number four, bottom, right. Very, very important. Always do this. Do not deviate. It will save your bacon sometime. Six. Try to get in the habit of folding your stuff inside out. You'll notice my table needs painted again. After every job, I always paint it. I got lazy this time, which is unlike me, but uh, 17 bucks, 16 bucks, washable paint. Always paint your table. Always keep it clean. Spit, you know, because here I am doing white. Boom! There we go. Now that fancy pushing when you're doing 
corners like this. So what I like to do, a little rule of thumb, is I like to do one side when I'm doing curves like this, okay? Then I like to take it and fold it over in on itself and just see where I stand. Now, if you'll come over here, you'll notice. I come over here. This was my eye. This is what I thought the half inch was. So here and there, pretty damn good. So what we'll do is we'll We'll come back, you know, just fur it out to where it's exactly perfect. So I, I rose up a little bit on this side, maybe a quarter inch on just one little spot, and maybe uh, an eighth over here. So basically, our ends are perfect, and in the field like this, you do have wiggle room. I mean, within reason. So, once again, mirror image. And get in the habit. When you have a mirror image like this, this is just another form of a gusset. Always come down, get your ends together, pinch your end. And that's a true witness mark. Okay, come back over here, pinch it to length, witness mark, you fold it out, you'll always know where the center of this piece of fabric is. Always use witness marks. Please look at me. Witness marks are your friends. Nice. All right. So, again, we fold good side to good side when we're working with our pieces. So they do not become marred. Marred means something you had in your table, a scratch, something. Always, always get into the habit of this. All these, all these things matter. All this matters, especially when you're moving and you got all kinds of stuff going. Fold it good side to good side, okay? Good side to good side. Good side to good side. No matter what it is, good side to good side. Good side to good side. And then you're safe. Because sometimes, you know, you might be down to, um, they don't have no more of this fabric. And it's one shot, one kill. You have to do this with what you have. You have enough. Trust me, this is a thing. Okay. Are you with me? Having fun yet? Is the upholstery still cool? All right. So we have traced seven patterns for our seat. Now, Normally, I got stands that they can, these, these go on, but I'm doing some remodeling. So, at the edge of your table, you got these big long rods, and then you can just roll your fabric out and then twist it back up and stow it away. It's on casters. Uh, we're building new ones. That's why I'm doing this all by hand right now. So, we have the entire hide cut out. Now, remember yesterday when we made a French seam and we did welt cord. This is welt cord, okay? And uh, this is uh, 6 30 seconds. And this is standard. This is what you're going to use, you know, braided. Uh, this is a 500 yard spool. But 6 30 seconds you use on everything. Everything. Unless, you know, you're doing some real uh, dainty uh, work on uh, automotive, but basically any kind of uh, marine and automotive. This is this is pretty much standard. 
six thirty seconds. You're going to use that on almost everything. And uh, you know, like I said, there's there's different there's different sizes. You know, like this. This is considerably different. You notice the diameter on this. This is automotive. So it all changes. It all changes thicknesses, sole allowances, um, relief cuts. All of this is is crucial. And you'll see this if you stick with me. I'll make you uh, really good at this. Uh, so. Again, it's 100 degrees here in Spokane, Washington, and I'm sweating like I stole something because i got to turn off the air conditioner so you can hear me. Let's see, what's next? Um, we're going to uh, glue these pieces that we just cut out to our scrim. So, remember what I said? Scrim, like, for instance, um... You got a piece of vinyl. You glue this vinyl good side. Bam. You glue it on top of here. And then underneath is that fabric, that mesh. So when you hear that cross hats pattern or something, you want it to pillow up. When you sew through this, this fabric keeps it from pulling back through and it and it and it, and it holds the integrity and you're good to go. So always you glue good side up to the foam side and always leave the fabric side down. Even if you're using it in, in this application, we're not sewing through it. It's, it's not uh, an aesthetic thing. We're not doing pillowing or quilting or anything like that. Um, I just like the rigidity of it and uh, it really gives me good corners. And you'll see what I mean. Like when I... I, I added, you know, to avoid those divots in, in the, the, the improper way that they had upholstered this in the first place. So what we do here, and this is for our piping. That's black. They have a sheen black. So I just take this like this, and I roll out my scrim, foam side up, fabric side down, always fabric side down. Once again, fabric side down, always, always, never forget fabric side down foam side up virgin side up so <clears throat> you're going to want a board of some kind or you have plastic that you can lay down if you can afford to waste it there's probably an eighth of an inch of, uh, of glue on this i've used this board so much um so what i do Make sure it's clean. Okay. I'll start with uh, our panels. Okay. And what what you do? This this can this can bellow up on you. Good side up. Okay. So we'll start here. Bring it up to the edge of your table. Okay, we're going to glue this, all right? So what we use here, at Walmart, you can get these, okay? This is just a, a regular paint sprayer, 20 bucks, and you go through them like cordwood. Run them till they gunk up and throw them in the trash and go buy another one. They'll last you a long time, okay? And then we use the Landau. I think I'm almost out of it. I need to get another jug. Five gallon, it, uh, it's uh, wood cement. Landau and uh, it's a yellow glue sometimes it comes in red but uh, you uh, you want to use that if you can it'll save you opposed to buying cases of spray adhesive okay which you buy it singularly can cost you up to uh you know 15 bucks a can nowadays that uh <clears throat> our government has changed uh so we uh i think i'm paying 62 bucks for 12 cans of this you can use it sparingly 
it, you know, it goes a long way. But I like to use it uh, for smaller applications. So I like to use the Landau on, oh man, what happened to my, okay. Um, <laughs> Boy, you can't take me nowhere, I swear. All right, I'm back. Had some technical difficulties. I had to put a new nozzle on my sprayer. So, do one piece at a time. Get yourself a board. Make sure it's not going to overspray on anything. Good side to good side. Everything's stowed away. Nothing's going to blow around, okay? Kind of hold your stuff down. You can adjust the clock. Always get your corners real good. The edges. Then you're good. Boom, boom. You don't really have to wait too very long. So get your bang for your buck. Lay that down nice and easy. Now, when you're gluing vinyl or leather to scrim or half inch foam or any kind of foam, don't push like this. Push down. Always push down like this. And I'll tell you why. Now, if I was to hold this and go like this, this piece would elongate by up to five-eighths of an inch in places. I mean, you never know. It's bizarre. Your patterns won't match up. Never push. Ever push. You're going it, to, it's going to be bad. You're going to be this long on this end and this short on this end. It's going to be horrible. So always push down. Push down. Okay. So good side up. Foam. Bottom of the good side on the foam. And always... Fabric on the bottom when you do when you're using scrim, okay. So and always pat. Never push. Never pull. Pat. Trust me, it's a bad mistake. So always have silicone. You know, like see that the perimeter that I used. I just kind of go like this. A little bit of silicone there. Boom, boom, boom. I'm ready for a new piece. Nothing will stick. Little trick. Silicone. Save your bacon. Feel good around the edges. Use your adjustment knob. You'll figure it out. You ain't rocket science. You'll see how it's going. Another little thing too, you can always like kind of figure out where you're going to go with your, with, you know, because you want to 
use as much of this as you can so you can kind of do a dry fit and go okay oh look at that that's where that's gonna go so then you come over here oh. you know so I'll fold it you know like that and boom Now your witness marks, I already know where it's going. I mean, you can take your time and do a cheat sheet and once you cut them out, you can re, you know, right, you know, left, right, front, back, bottom. I mean, you're gonna know, you're gonna know. But, uh, so anyway. Boom, boom, and then just lay it down flat and push, push, don't push. Again, don't ever do that. Always push down. You want to give this a minute to bite before you go messing with it. I don't know, 20 minutes. But I've, I've, I glued it and cut it out and sewed it right away too, but it's not. Give it a minute. Let it dry up. Okay. So, always have yourself a board. A little practice spray. Um, what do we have room for over there? You know, just kind of see what you got. Try to get your bang for your buck. Okay. So come over here like this. Yeah. So we could probably get one there. One there. And one one there. Maybe, right? Huh? Try to make it work. Or I can't come up like that. That's probably the mess right there. And what's our other piece? No, nope. we'll do this. Now your anchor, this is what sews in between that, in, you know, creates the indifference between the two pieces of foam. So you don't, you don't have to use those, but you know, always get in the habit of figuring out, okay, where am I at here? So me looking at this just now, this is probably the smart money right here. Let's do this big one. You know, this stuff ain't cheap. So use what you got. And then we'll lay both of those side to side. And, and, and you'll use this eventually. I got piles of it. So, what we'll do we'll come back here.
pull this up. This land out blue, it's about 150 bucks right now for a five gallon can. It used to be about uh, 105. Things are going up now. But, uh, uh, Get in the habit of starting with one. Pat, don't push. Bam. And when you have these big pieces, always remember, remember how we, we did our witness mark prior? That's the center of this piece of fabric. Always do your witness marks before you cut your foam. Or glue your foam, you put it down on your foam. It's just easier. It's a good habit to get into if you, you know, always nick, nick your witness marks first before you do all of this. Okay, so we're good, good, good. Uh, little silicone over here. Just, you can see where the glue was. You just go right there, right over where your glue was. Yeah. You can use a board forever. Look how much glue is on that thing. And, and actually, this is for door panels and stuff. This board add an extra piece. Of, uh, they're about sixteen bucks. But anyway, this thing's like two years old, and it's my weird thing. So, okay, so this is the anchor. This does not need foam. We have. Two more pieces, so we can go bam, 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 bam. Always mock them up if you can, you know. Yeah, sweet. So we'll come over here. Always come up high. Again, make sure everything's out of your way. To, you know, you don't want this glue on stuff if you don't have to have it on there. Come up high, and then what? Then the then it'll get some weight to it. So it doesn't flop up on you. Always come up high with your gun. See that? Then you're good. Then you come up the back. You can see how it wants to see that? You can see how it wants to fly up. So you want to come up? Come at it from the top. You don't got to. I mean, you're going to want, you want some glue on here. You want, you know, that's why you want this kind of glue instead of that kind of glue. Uh, because these seats are getting uh, a beat down. You know, a boat. People are putting there's water all over. They're jumping. They're standing on it. They're just, it's crazy. So, you can't have this separating. You don't want no chance of this separating. Always push down, never push. Always push down. Push down. All right. Then silicone, and you can see, like I said, where you where you just where you just did your thing. The silicone is just it's kind of expensive, but when you're pushing and sticking and moving, it's worth the the luxury, you know. Buy a can of that. It's, I think it's like twelve bucks. So what? When you're doing this, you, so you don't. You know, you can just look at that. It just slides over the top. None of that glue is sticking to the, the good side. Silicone. Old board.
Now, when you're using this land now, don't want to get around too long. You want it kind of wet. You don't want it to tack up like you're... A lot of this application, sometimes you'll, you'll do the bottom of a piece with this land down and let it dry. And then you'll do like this and let it dry. And when they touch, they're, they're bonded forever. But in this instance, you want it a little wet. Don't sit around a lot again. Try to get as much of your foam as you can. Just gently lay it down. Just pat it down. Never push. Again, never push. It will, it will distort and add or it will change. When you go to sew it together, it's going to be a nightmare. You have to do it over. So! Here we are. <laughs> Three, four, five, six. And with the anchor that goes in between the two pieces of foam that gives it its definition, is seven pieces for a boat seat. With the welt, the piping, if you will, is eight pieces. We went through teardown. We went through tracing. We went through adjusting your tracing to where your pieces become true. There's some insight. You have to adapt. You have to be mindful and go, well, that doesn't look right. And oftentimes your eye will tell you, you know, don't deviate too far from the pattern that you're working with, but be able to be confident enough to recognize that you can alter it in a correct fashion. Your eye will tell you. Those things come with experience. You can still follow the pattern exact, and it's, it's, just, it's just not really the way you do it, you know. You, be mindful of those little quarter inch, half inch, quarter inch, half inch. Remember how we did it? Watch that video again. It's crucial. There's some very, very key points in there. So now you have your pattern cut out and we've glued it scrim. Fabric side down. Remember scrim when you're sewing. Like let's say I put a bunch of hashtags in here like this and like this. And then I went and sewed them all on there and it's all pillowed up. Well, this fabric keeps that thread from poking through and you ruin your whole piece. So whether you're using it for that application or you're just using it because I like the rigidity of it and that happens to be what I have right now, um, always fabric side down, scrim, fabric side down, scrim, fabric side down. This annoying repetition will make massive sense to you once you do this a few times. Okay, now we just cut it out. And, you know, you cut it out exact, and uh, uh, we'll make our piping next, our, our welt cord, and uh, we're ready to put this sucker together. I'll see you around like a donut.